Well, now that we have the WADK installed, it's time to do something with it. So one of the first things that we might consider is to create a customized boot image. You don't necessarily have to create a customized boot image, but we'll show you how to do it with the WADK tools. So first off, what do we need a boot image for in the first place? Well, it's useful for kicking off an operating system deployment. We have to have something to start the machine with before we actually install the operating system and applications in the install image. And we might need to customize the boot image, for example, to have a special driver or to add a, a feature that we might want. We can also use a boot image for doing troubleshooting and repair. So you can do that with the WADK tools as well, as we'll see. So where can I use the boot image that I've custom made with the WADK tools? You can make your own media with the make win PE media command, as we'll see. We can take our custom boot image and inject it into the MDT, which we'll be looking at soon. One of the enterprise tools that we can use for automating operating system deployment. And we can also use it in system center configuration manager. If we're using that as our uh, primary tool for OSD or operating system deployment. Finally, we can use a boot image in WDS. We can import it into a WDS server if we want to do deployments over the network. Well, let's take a look at some of the tools in the WADK uh, and how we might put them to work in creating a customized WinPE boot image. So here we are at the system onto which we installed the WADK. So if I go over to the start screen, we can see a tile named Deployment and Imaging Tools Environment. And that's basically just going to open up a command prompt that'll be at the correct folder location. So we'll run this as an administrator because we're going to need elevated privileges to run some of the commands that we're going to need. And so here we are at the proper folder. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a work area for um, working with our WinPE files. And there's a command to do that called copy PE. So the syntax there is copy PE. We want the 64-bit version, so AMD 64. And our work area, we'll just put it into a folder called WinPE64 at the root of the C drive. And then copy PE will populate those files in the WinPE64 folder. And now we have a successful completion. And so we could, for example, take a peek over in File Explorer and take a look at the C drive. And there's our WinPE64 folder with some of the files that we're going to be working with. In particular, I'll call your attention to the media folder. If I take a peek inside that, I'll see a folder called Sources, which contains boot.wim. So that's the boot image that I'm going to modify. I'm just going to add a couple of features to it and then use that for our custom boot image, our custom WinPE environment. Also notice down here is a mount folder. It's empty right now. We're going to use that to expand the contents of boot.wim. So to do all of that, we'll bounce back over here to our command prompt environment. And we will use the DISM command line tool to basically expand the contents of boot.wim into that mount folder so that we can then customize those contents. So DISM slash mount image slash image file, and then we'll provide the path. So C backslash WinPE 64, sorry for the line wrap there, media, sources, and boot.wim. That's where we want to expand out from. It's the first image in that WIM file. So we'll say index one, and where do we want to put the working files? Mount dir, and then we'll choose C WinPE 64, and we'll use that ready-made mount folder. And the deployment image servicing and management tool kicks into gear. Okay, so now that that's done, we can verify that something actually happened by going back out here to our 
C drive and WinPE64. And remember that mount folder that was empty is no longer empty. It's been populated with the structure of the boot.wim file by our DISM command. So we're making progress. Going back over here, what we want to do now is add a couple of optional components to WinPE to support that early provisioning of BitLocker encryption. And that requires two pieces, uh, an optional component called WinPE WMI and one called WinPE Secure Startup. Well, the first thing we need to do is change to the folder where these components were placed by the copy PE command at the start. So we'll do a CD and go up to the Windows pre-installation environment AMD64 and there's a folder called WinPE OCS for optional components and now we're in the right place and now we'll add we'll add the WinPE WMI package to our mount working folder so that's going to be DAISM add package where well it's going to be c backslash winpe64 backslash mount and where's the package so package path and the first one of the two that we need is winpe dash wmi.cab And we have a successful completion, and we've sped up that time period and cut out a lot of the boring wait time. And now we've got to add the second component. We can just use the up arrow and change the name of the package path, which in this case is winpe-securestartup.cab, and we'll add that package. And that one went a lot faster than the first one did. And now we've got the packages installed that we want. We can verify that with DISM slash get packages and point it to the image again at the C WinPE64 mount location. And we can see that our WMI package and secure startup package got loaded. There were already a couple of packages there and the standard one, a language pack. So it looks like we're in business. Now it's time to commit our changes and save them out to the boot.wim file. So we're going to do that with an unmount command, DISM slash unmount image. Again, where is it? Over here at CWinPE64 mount. And we're happy with our changes, so we will commit them. And now we can confirm the changes that got made, again going out to File Explorer and Local Disk C and WinPE64. And let's check our mount folder, empty again, right, because I've now unmounted that work area. And that, let's go take a look at that boot.wim file that should be all repackaged. And there it is, and in fact it's a bit bigger than it used to be. So we've successfully customized that boot.wim file, which I could now use in the deployment of my operating system as a boot image with that special capability added in. Um, alternatively, if I wanted to simply use that custom WinPE environment to build a boot DVD or a boot uh, flash drive, I could do that as well. If I go up a couple of levels, I could, for example, make a ISO file that I could use for burning a DVD with the make WinPE media command slash ISO because that's the kind of file I want to make. And where is it going to be coming from? WinPE64. And where do I want it to go to? WinPE64.ISO. And now my ISO file is built, and I could use that to burn a DVD. Uh, you can also use make WinPE media with the slash UFD parameter if you wanted to burn a flash drive.